Mitch. Just uh, so, so many departures and from last year, so many new faces, I guess. Just how's the transition going with so many key people gone and so many key people moving into new places? Well, uh, we were excited for all the guys. Uh, you know, at the end of the season, they got picked up and are continuing their careers in professional baseball. I know the guys are moving on to other ventures in their life, so obviously it's exciting watching as many guys came through here and graduate and get their degree and move on to the professional world, whether it's sports or life. Uh, you know, from a, uh, the strictly sports side of it, you know, yeah, there's a, you know, we all see there's the whole outfield uh, took off and we had some big arms with Jerb and Finn and Carpenter, but you know, reality is like that's part of our job is to uh, develop them while they're here, build lasting relationships, help them out so that they're ready for that next step, whatever it may be. And really, we had a lot of guys chomping up the bit, guys that didn't play a ton last year that really want to get out there and go, uh, and some incoming guys, some freshmen and some transfers that everyone wants to be the number one guy at their spot here and in the country. And so it's made for really competitive practices and. Um, you know, some heartfelt conversations, letting people know where they stand and watching how they respond to it. Um, so I know that, you know, yeah, there's a lot of new faces, but at the same time, I think, uh, you know, Dor and Gip did a fantastic job bringing in uh, the right people. Very athletic. I mean, if you see them in the weight room, you're kind of wondering, can we get these young kids any stronger? Because they're already uh, taking care of it uh, throughout, you know, their high school years. And you know, as I'm sitting next to these two guys right now, um, they've been great ambassadors for this program too. Uh, connecting with recruits when, when they're on campus is something that they are very interested in because they care about the, the program and this family's longevity. Um, and also just, you know, we encourage all those recruits to reach out and talk to the people who um, they really want to hear from. Mm -hmm. Not always me, but the, the student athletes to really understand what that experience is like here and what to expect. Um, you know, only being a few weeks out from, from game one, uh, we're gonna continue to push. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like, okay, let's start settling in and get ready. Uh, it goes throughout the duration of the year, and we have a lot of guys that are really hungry to work, so it's not any complacency, that's for sure. And, you know, we, I, I think the, the biggest thing is not focusing on what everyone else is doing, but more so taking care of just ourselves, making sure that we're pushing and getting better in the weight room and on the field and, and in the classroom. So. Um, not worried about any other noise out there except taking care of the guys we have. Trav, I wonder, uh, with so many new faces, is there a different energy? And, and with so many new faces, are the expectations the same? Like, if you just describe the energy and the expectations. Um, first, touch on the expectations. I think the expectations are the same. And mm -hmm. Part of what makes this program special is that everyone in the, in the clubhouse and the family thinks that Omaha is the place every year, and we believe that wholeheartedly. So I think the expectations of Omaha um, came up short, a little sour taste in our mouth last year. So um, that's the expectation this year. Um, and then, yeah, there's definitely a different energy. Um, last year, a lot of guys had really solidified their track in the program and knew uh, kind of what they could do out there. And this year, there's like a lot of young faces, a lot of talent. Um, and guys are just ready to go out there and make their mark on the program and, and go win. So it's, it's different, but yeah, it's fun. For Travis and Garrett, like Travis, you just mentioned the, the sour taste in mouth. Getting so close to Omaha, coming up just short, how much has that kind of translated to motivation or you know, how much have you used that to kind of fuel yourselves going into this year? Yeah, for me, um, I actually have a picture in my locker of Auburn dogpiling on our field for motivation. So it's definitely a uh, sour taste, as, we, as Trav said, that we want to get rid of and have the sweet taste of victory in Omaha this year and take this young group of guys and um, develop them with the potential they have. We know we can get there, and then they'll they'll get Natty five, six, and seven in the next coming next couple of years. Yeah, I think that. It's kind of like you you just spend time in the months like past that open regional, super regional, um, like thinking about where can you be better, where can I feed into other guys and help them be better. Um, just try to like 
make up what was necessary to be an Omaha team every year. So, um, yeah, just like thinking about it, dwelling on it, um, facing, like being self aware with where personally you can be better and um, give out to others. For Mitch, uh, lost a lot of innings in the rotation last year, especially with Coop going in the first round. H how are you feeling about the current pitching staff that you guys going, especially on the front end? Well, we've been training um, extremely hard. Door Door's pushing the pitchers in ways we haven't had to in the past. <clears throat> Yesterday, having last year, having some of those arms like Coop, we're just working on slight tweaks in a, a pitch here or there, or controlling the running game, maybe with a couple other guys. Well, when you have younger arms, you know, there's a there's a progression to what you want to see. Number one, you want to see them be able to go out there and be comfortable in their own spikes and have some commitment, some conviction in what they're doing on the mound. And so until you have the mentality, it's hard to build the rest around it. Uh, I think, again, alluding to these guys and, and the people they share the clubhouse with, they were really good about acclimating all the new faces and getting up to speed. And that happened throughout the entirety of the fall, even over break, seeing guys wanting to stick around and work out together, the amount of time they spend away from the field together. Uh, you know, Travis and I talked um, not too long ago about the new faces and him, like what it was like for him to be the new guy. You know, Garrett came in and he already knew he was, you know, the best bunner on the team, <laughs> best strike zone command, he believed in all that stuff and he's, he's proven it to be true. Um, you know, and, and as Travis and I talked about, you know, big energy, wanting it, having a, a lot of his life, people telling him, no, you can't do this. And one of my favorite things about Travis, other than, uh, you know, his ability to be a great human being to everyone around him is anytime you tell him no, he's going to prove you wrong. Uh, Dorman brought it up and said, uh, Travis, you don't want to get on the mound. And then instantly I know Travis is going to start working on a slider um, <laughs> to prove to Dorman that he could pitch and eat up innings uh, in an effective way. So we're going to back off of that, okay? Um, but the way that they go about pushing each other around him, especially in our pitching staff, having guys like Ben Ferrer and Browdy and Kamatz, um, who know the system, who really want to be successful. We talked about this. It's not about being nice guys. Nice guys never finish on the, uh, well, where they want to be on the podium. And so we got to be truth tellers with one another, no different than any other year. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for those young guys or the guys that have been waiting in the back behind guys like Jerp and Finn uh, to jump out front and get innings and make some big uh, strides. And so. I'm not concerned about it. I'm actually pretty excited. You know, if Thor was up here on the stage right now, he'd be thrilled to talk about the arms and how they're getting better and better. And we could guess Jacob's going to get a, a good portion of innings in the rotation this year based on what he did last year. Any other guys you're really excited to, to really get out there on the mound, watch, maybe get stretched out a little bit in a bigger role? All of them. <laughs> I mean, really, there's, you know, like you said, there's a lot, a lot of potential for some uh, new innings, but... Trent Sellers coming in, watching how he's adapted to this role, being an older guy, mixing in his looks very quick to the plate, um, attacks the zone. You know, we have a lot of guys right now that attack the zone. We've seen uh, just from the fall and, and thus far when guys got back from break, uh, a guy like Quinn who's really filling up the strike zone. Guy who's been in the upper 90s and a pretty heavy breaking ball. If he continues to fill up the zone, that guy can make a huge impact for us this year. Uh, with his mentality and everything. Even his times of the plate are now sub 1-3 and he's still filling up the strike zone. So excited to see jumps from guys like that, you know, that second year jump, really settling in and allowing yourself to be uh, who you know you yourself to be. And then, um, you know, I, I think Hunter and Lawson making big jumps this year as well. Uh, Hunter did a great job last year in, in multiple roles, starting or relieving, pitching some big games. Um, you know, and so he's even learning more about himself, how to really drive the ball down and making it move. It's been, uh, I caught him a few times and, you know, he's reminding me that I should be wearing a thumb guard. Um, <laughs> and then they got like Lawson who is, as he said, I'm sick of, of waiting. I'm sick of being on the back burner. I, I want to be the guy now. Um, and so he's made some big jumps with just his intent and his velocity and how he's training is a lot different than it's been in the past. So. I can see those guys having uh, big years. Uh, yeah, they really turned the corner for themselves, not just for Oregon State, but for the longevity of their career.
piggybacking on that, Mitch, is it safe to say that you, you don't know yet what your weekend rotation is, A, and, and B, are you kind of hoping that Brown and Ferrer emerge as starters? Is that kind of your plan or hopes right now, or is that still too early? We're, we're setting everyone up to be ready to go uh, long if needed. You know, the more times they touch the ball, the cleaner their stuff's getting, the stronger their arms are getting. Um, you know, we haven't put together a rotation yet, but between Kamats, Sellers, uh, Hunter, Lawson, Townsend, you know, there's a lot of guys. Larson, who also fills it up, he threw a 110 innings and walked, you know, like eight uh, last year. And so there's a lot of guys that fill up the zone, which is what we want. We have a great defense, let's let them work. Um, and that's how we've also um, put up our numbers like we have as far as eliminating walks and striking out a lot of guys. If you get ahead in those uh, 0011 counts, the strike, strikeout percentage goes through the roof. And that's why we've done a great job over these years. Door challenges those guys, they challenge each other, strike one, win the one ones, you know, win the two twos, um, and just attacking the hitter. I think uh, their mentality has continued that progression over the last several years. Um, but a guy like Ben, you know, we've seen him in multiple roles. He may, and he's willing to do anything and everything it takes. That's been the message that he's delivered to us. Uh, we know he can start. We know he's got the stuff to do it, to pitch backwards. And then, you know, but there's something to be said about a guy who can jump in and finish out a game if you need four innings or three innings or one. Um, so he's going to be very versatile for us this year. We might see him start from time to time. We might see him come out of the pen. You know, we may uh, start one of the other guys on Friday, and if we need Ben, we go to him. And if he's safe for Sunday, maybe we just jump right out and give the ball to him. But I think he's ready for anything. Um, and Ben has been very inspirational to all the other arms uh, around him. He's been pushing the needle forward. So Ryan's still closer? Or is he in that mix too? Yeah, any I mean, we've all seen what Brownie can do. There's no yeah. doubt at the end of the game, you know, he's got the, probably one of the best chances of getting the ball. No doubt about it, but it also comes to where we at in their their lineup. He might come in in the eighth mm -hmm. and get two innings. He might come in in the seventh because it's the heart of the lineup and we want and it's the best matchup for him. I don't think there's necessarily saying, hey, you need to drive this one guy only for the ninth inning. But if their best part of their lineups uh, right there in the eighth, you know, then we can have some other guys that maybe have really good success against those guys in the ninth too. So, um, you know. It's, it's changing how it's been done in the big leagues. It's changed how it's done in collegiate ball. I think it's just uh, game management, sticking with your plan, and also being able to adjust from time to time, um, you know, based on emotions and you know, where the need is. Brownie's a guy that when he comes in the game, everyone gets excited, mm -hmm. and you know he's going to go out there and give his best stuff. <clears throat> and so maybe we just need a, a spark of energy, and he comes in a little earlier. But um, I thought what he was able to do last summer, go out and throw some innings, uh, coming in as a starter was also good for him developing his pitches even more. Uh, for, for Darren Trapp, last year we were hearing a lot about you and, you know, the freshman that everybody was talking about and, and the ways that you had made in the fall. I wonder from, from a player's perspective, who's that incoming freshman who's kind of impressed you guys the most in fall and, and through, through workouts? Um, there's a couple. That's a pretty talented class. Mm -hmm. I think, in terms of potential impact, there's a couple guys that really jumped to my mind. And that's Gavin Turley, Dallas Mercedes, and Easton Paul. Mm -hmm. On the offensive side, I'm kind of biased. So, mm -hmm. pitches, someone else can figure that out. But um, those guys are pretty special. And they look really confident in their cleats um, from the get go. And I think that's the biggest thing between like the su success of guys freshman year, sophomore years, often you see guys break out in their sophomore year um, and they had all the skills and talent freshman year to do what they did in their sophomore year, but it's just about like believing and like having that identity in yourself. So biggest thing I'm trying to push with those guys that are pretty special and could make an impact on this team is like believe that you belong here and you're gonna do great things this year. Like it's not, you don't have to wait to be that guy. So, um, yeah. I'm excited for uh, AJ Hutchinson. He's a freshman uh, side armor from Elk Grove, California, so my neck of the woods. And I've got to see him play growing up a little bit and uh, the way he's changed and progressed and um, 
getting to see him work here in the fall was really cool, and um, he put it to us hitters. So I'm I'm expecting that he's going to do great things for our uh, bullpen this this year. First of all, I just want to say what a privilege it is to be able to cover this program and how excited I am to be here and not do that. But probably for Garrett and Travis mostly, when you have multiple guys not only playing Major League Baseball who have come from this program in recent years, but finishing as finalists for Rookie of the Year, how much tangible motivation does that bring you guys when you talk about especially longevity of careers? Yeah, I think we all just want to be like them, and we're all wanting to live their dream. So we see the work that they put in, and they come back, and they work here during the winter time and in the early spring before they go to spring training, and we get to see what they do and um, get to uh, hear what coaching's like and what the life's like, and it, it drives home that dream that we have of being at that next level and being where we want to be. Yeah, I just think that, like, again, seeing them around like shows kind of the family that's built here over the years and they come back and they want to be a part of it all those guys like the names that come to your head they're all around um and yeah they're willing to give back and hopefully we get the chance to be in their shoes and then give back to the next like generation of beef so it's it's special and it motivates me to like want to be great and then also put into the people that are coming after me. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that, you say these guys come back a lot. Is there a piece of advice you've gotten from Adley or Steven maybe that has resonated with you? I think just to see their worth or work ethic is, I mean, they don't um, have to say anything, but just the way that they work, we get to see that and see what it takes to be where they're at. Um, and I know that's what I've taken most from them. I've got a more specific one. Steven came back, obviously like rookie of the year finalist, gets back to Corvallis, he's just playing catch with um, another bead and I went up to him and was like, hey, like you're probably hearing this a lot, but like crazy year. So it was exciting to watch what you did. Um, and I kind of just asked him like, how did you feel like transitioning from breaking in AAA to the to the big leagues and um, what kind of takeaways did you leave after a long 162 game season? And he basically just said like, the game's the same and like you still get pitches to hit and people make that transition to the big leagues bigger than it is offensively. And so it was kind of like, damn, like as much as people get better as you move on, um, you still get pitches to hit. You still just got to get your foot down on time. So like he kind of just simplified that. And I was like, and no wonder he's so good is he's got that like mental state where he just know, he believes in what he does and keeps the game simple. Yeah. Mitch, you've uh, you know having led the program for a few years now and been through that recruiting process. <coughs> How are you feeling about the, the work that you and your staff have done as far as you know reloading the rosters as opposed to rebuilding it? Yeah. Um, like I said, those guys are doing a phenomenal job. You know, we have co-recruiting coordinators. And it's not that Dor just takes care of the arms and Gip takes care of the position guys or anything like that. They communicate a ton. And, you know, me being involved in that, I wanted to give them the autonomy to run it how they see fit. Um, you know, but we're all out on the road. We're all talking about it. It's part of the, the I guess, the, the joy of working with some of your best friends. Um, you know, we'll be on the phone. Um, early, early morning, noon, or late, late at night, um, just talking about whether it's family stuff or, or recruiting. And, you know, you know, we all understand, we're, yes, we're looking for the right talent. We're also trusting the advice of our student athletes when kids are coming in on, on, their, on their visits, um, because we wanna make sure, like, they always are gonna act different around me or the other coaches than they will our student athletes. So, getting great feedback from these guys, Getting, I mean, really in depth. We, we take our time with recruiting because we want to make sure we're getting people that really want to be here and people that are really going to fit our culture and continue this. Do we see that person coming back five years after they're gone and wanting to still work out or hang out with the guys or give back to the program? Do we see this person being respectful in their communities? Do we see this person as someone who's going to be able to handle, you know, hard feedback, the truth, and how are they going to respond to it? Um, and so we go through a very extensive process and Dor and Gibb especially are really good not only spotting talent, 
but spotting the right kind of guys. And that's why I look at this year, some of these young guys that have, uh, are probably going to be a, a big part of our, uh, our season, you know, the, they were looking at them for the last several years and bringing on the right character. Now these guys are performing already as freshmen, where a lot of times you bring in guys and they need a year or two, you know. But every single one of those guys, after not performing or playing as much as they want after year two, they start to get mad in a good way. Like, I, I'm sick of being on the back burner. I want to compete. Doran Gibbs has done a great job. Um, recruiting and, and committing the right guys that we feel are going to be impactful year one um, and also are going to be able to handle if they're not in the lineup the right way and still lift everyone else up around them. So I wouldn't say it's, I, I personally don't feel like rebuilding, you know, I just think we also have other guys that are hungry and when you have guys that were that good as a lot of our guys, shoot, I'm trying to find and push our guys to take his spot at second base. I'm trying to find guys to take his spot at first base. Because I know what they'll do, they will in turn elevate their game and take that spot back. And it's just rising everyone up around them. I mean, both of these guys here, we might see them play traditional first base or second base. You might see them run around the outfield again. I don't know if outfield's in in, in your path right now, it, but it, it, it could be. He'll do whatever. He'll do whatever it takes. He wants to catch anyway. So no doubt about it. Yes, he reminds me every day. And uh, third base. And third base. But that also is an option. We've seen Garrett play second base. You know, I think it's the energy is a real thing, and the willingness to do whatever it takes uh, to win the ball game I think is important. And that's why these guys are great beeves and great ball players, and that's what we focus on when we recruit, bringing in the right people. So I don't, I don't feel a rebuild. I think these guys are going to go out and handle their business and push each other, and and do what we know they can do. And this was asked to the players, but. Who are some of those uh, newcomers that you feel like might uh, be able to have an immediate impact for you? Well, you touched on um, you know, the position player side. I also look at from the, the pitching side, since we've already covered a couple of guys. Uh, Nelson Keljo, big body, strong arm, made some big jumps with his slider. Didn't pitch a ton in the fall because he had a really busy summer, uh, so we didn't have him on the same pace as the other guys. Uh, also see, you know, like Hutch, He's got some funky stuff. He's also very confident. He doesn't get stressed out, you know, when everyone's watching him throw, um, which shows a lot of maturity and the ability to go out there and pitch in meaningful games. Um, I'd also say, you know, a guy like Aiden Jimenez, a very strong arm. And I look at this kid, not just for this year, but down the road, he's continued to get better and better. He wants the baseball, he's a big body. And he's got feel for multiple pitches. Still got a ways to go, as most of us like always do. But you know, I see a lot of great things coming out of those arms. And really, any of those guys can be the pick to click in any given moment. Um, their work ethic strong. And I watch a guy like like Brownie sit down there and work with guys. And Brownie was a freshman. We joke about this freshman All American as a junior. You know, so he. He bought his time, but he also made that choice in his life that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the corner. I'm not going to be timid anymore. I want it better than anyone else. And I'm going to go out there and finish the game because that's what's needed of me to do. And other guys are starting to see that. You know, So we pay a lot of attention to the freshmen, pay a lot of attention to the hurt guys, pay a lot of attention to those guys that are you know, not necessarily in the everyday lineup. The guys that are in the lineup every day and doing their thing, you know, you just make sure they don't drift away from the process we got on there. But a lot of those other guys, we're trying to elevate them so they go out there and make an attempt to take their job, or if something happens, they're ready to jump in. We saw it from Nernetti, we saw it from Meckler, we saw it from Boyd. Boyd came in as an infielder, right? A left side infielder. And he goes to first, and then he goes to the outfield, and he's, you know, the most amazing outfielder in the country. Um, cutting balls off in the gaps, and so it's just, He's a ball player, he wants to win. And for a lot of our freshmen, we do that with them too. For Easton Talk, not easy for him. He's running out in the outfield one practice, the next day he's running behind the dish. Then I tell him to take round balls just to keep his legs moving around. Uh, and it's not, it's not easy to balance outfield and catching, but he's athletic, so very athletic that, you know, he can even lay, he's a, he has the ability to catch, but he also has the ability to lay down a bunt and get down the line and, you know, 3.4 seconds. So that's a pretty nasty weapon to have. Um, I'd say any of our freshmen were excited for. Even the guys that 
are a little banged up and haven't been able to participate uh, to this point. What they're providing, uh, I'm probably one of the most inspiring guys thus far, uh, transfer, grad transfer out of PLU, uh, Noah Ferguson. You know, he's, he's here and he's not able to do anything because he, he got fixed up, but he comes and he's willing to help anybody and everybody. Never heard the guy complain one time. And he knows he's not competing this year. And it's guys like that that not, again, I've said this before, it's not what they do when the ball's in their hand, but when it's not, that you really pay attention to. And guys like Noah and other guys have kind of bonded together and even made the environment better for these guys. So if we're, if we're very successful this year, it's not just the guys that are on the field playing, but it's all those guys that are built up around them to make sure that they're, they're not drifting. Two questions off, one for Carter, one for Aaron. Mitch, how much time in, in the off season, in, in the summer and in the fall, do you spend working with the analytics squad? And, and maybe could you provide some insight on how that helps guys like Garrett or Travis or guys who are coming back develop their games in the off season? Yeah, I mean, Brad and I are very close. Um, you know, he, he can pretty much do anything and everything. So if, if any, any time I just like hone him in on one or two projects because we'll try to do everything. Um, but I spent a lot of time talking with him, kind of behind the scenes. I don't want it to become noise for everybody. There's been times we ask him about defensive stuff, um, you know, just going back and, and looking through film. We made a transition this year. Everything at practice is filmed from every different angle. I love watching high home practice and just seeing how bodies move and where are we like not showing enough efficiency within our practice plan. I don't like practice to go three hours. I like it to go two hours and 15 minutes. And so if we can cut out some of the, the blase blah or stand around time, and then I look at us coaches, how, how much time are we spending with each guy out on the field? Are we moving or are we constantly just huddling together? And so um, we have all the tech in, in the world possible, but for me, it's also like going to a doctor. You don't need to go get an MRI every week. And so if we notice something, you know, then we go back and use our tools to help these guys develop. Um, we have a great strength coach, probably the best in the country. We have an amazing athletic trainer, also biased. I believe that all of you guys, by the way, are the best in the country. Um, proud Papa, you know. And so we trust those guys to tell us how their bodies are moving and what their energy levels like, and also finding ways to challenge them, you know, mentally, not just physically, because the season will have those those highs and lows, but. Analytics are, are, are a great tool to use to encourage what we're doing, or also you know, prove that, hey, we need to try something new. Um, and so I think it's just case by case basis. For Brad, he's really good at thinking of ideas and bringing them to us, myself, Dor, uh, Gibson, and Marty. Um, but also we give him special project stuff that we want to work on. Um, but for me personally, I've been asking for more video. Can't be everywhere at once, and so, if I'm not able to go watch a bullpen, I want to be able to watch it after practice. I usually watch film from my home at the end of every practice and see how we're moving and give my coaches big feedback. So Brad being able to have a team to go out and get that video and get it back to me quick has been extremely helpful for us coaches to make big jumps on how we do things. Um, but you know, definitely Brad is doing a better job every year getting the right people um, in that office of analytics and um, it's really connected us to university, and it's, it's been fun watching uh, some of the, the student managers uh, in analytics move on to professional careers, too. So not only are we excited for our student athletes that are making that jump um, as an athlete, but also for our managers. You know, James Marshall was here last year, and he's, he's now you know, the director of operations and working with uh, infielders across the country. And so whether they're on-field managers or analytics, it's just really cool to watch um, these young men and women develop. Awesome. And then for, for Garrett and Travis, you guys obviously have that bad taste in your mouth after last season. But with so many new players on the team, how have you almost instilled that bad taste in their mouth too, even if they might not have been there for that heartbreaking loss? I think that... It's kind of hard to instill the bad taste. Like they they felt it themselves. Like if they care about winning, if we recruited the right people, they were right in there with us when they were in the crowd or watching on TV. Like they would have felt that same kind of sour taste. Um, so 
yeah, it's just about like the right guys that are gonna understand what happened last year and take it on themselves to like play a role in an Omaha team this year. So you just want guys to step up as freshmen and believe in themselves and have an identity that they're the best player on the field every time they step on it. So I think that's that's it. Yeah. yeah. For me, they asked me about that picture in my locker, and you can see all of us in the dugout in the background. And it's because I tell them it's because I did not want to feel like that again. So let's find a way. You guys are the new generation. Let's find a way to get past where we did and know what this uh, organization is able to do and win another national championship. I like to make Hank mad, so I like to ask one after he says we're not allowed to. Uh, a couple years ago, it always seems like someone pops that, you know, has been in the program for a year or two, and you know, a couple years ago it was Mac and Melvin last year, I don't know, Gavin and Boyd maybe. Is there someone that we're like going to be pleasantly surprised by that, that popped in the fall, or, or you guys think it's private to blow up? Because he's got the answer, <coughs> that's like a, a good one, but you said like people that have been in the program. Well, um, who did you let's who did you say? I think the I think the biggest popper MC is from Ruben Casillo. Okay. He's a he's a transfer from Lynn Benton and he's shown that he can definitely compete at this level and is going to do very, very good things for us this year. What position? Center field. Okay, well, I'm sorry. And then I'd say, like, in terms of guys that have been here a little bit now, I think Brady Caswell. Hmm. Um, he started as an infield, kind of moved to the outfit really fast, but hmm. he's got the potential to be an impact bat, and I think he's ready <coughs> now to, to make that jump and be one of those guys that kind of steps in and you didn't really hear about him early on in his career yet and then mm -hmm. he's going to um, make that jump. And conversely, like, did you have one? You were about to say something. I was going to tell him. What, what were you going to say? <laughs> I was just thinking about the question before, like, to piggyback off what they were talking about, how do you <clears throat> motivate the, the other ones? Mm -hmm. I think it's just by the work that they that they do. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's real. Like, if, if like I said, we're not a bunch of nice guys, mm -hmm. you know. Like, but now, granted, kids camp goes on. I get all kinds of people emailing me compliments. Oh, you have such wonderful kids. They're holding the door for us, and you know, very cordial how they go about themselves in the community. I hear from it all the time. Small town, so you always hear from people about you know the good, the bad, whatever. I like the good emails, and mm -hmm. I hear about it all the time. But I also like, and they're very kind, like sweet, and they take care of other people. But they also push each other. And so like when it comes to the field and their work, they're not nice. Mm -hmm. They all want to start. They all want to be the everyday guy, they all want to win. And the more you do that and you get that other guy out of the way if he's not doing it right, you're not being mean, you're being competitive. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> the more I see those kind of things, the more encouraged I am, and then I know the younger guys are gonna have a chance to feel that hunger. You shouldn't have to wait to experience the really bad before you make an adjustment. Sadly, that's what most people decide to do. But when you have a tight brotherhood, you know, you tend to listen to your brothers a lot more than you listen to anyone else because uh, you know they really care. Uh, I mean, that's why these guys, I push them to go eat breakfast five days a week together, get to know each other, have real conversations. You know, today when we go practice, push somebody out of the way, right? If they're not, if they're not moving the needle in the right direction, just remember how bad that hurts to lose. I don't like going into a game and feeling bad, like, man, we should just push these guys harder or something like that. Like, that would, and, and as far as guys popping this year, ton, like, all over. I think that everybody that's sitting in that clubhouse right now that is healthy enough to get on the field has a great opportunity to go out and be an impact player. It just depends on what are you considering an impact player, hitting 350, hitting 20 homers, I would like throwing 100 innings and throwing a one year right now. I think that everyone has the potential to be an impact player, whether you throw one inning or 100, and whether you have 250 at bats or 10 or zero. That's just the way I look at it. So, you know, it may not come up about so and so player, you know, well, he didn't even do anything. Yeah, but this guy, Noah Ferguson, impacted everyone. You know, Isaac Hill, freshman. I mean, he's not going to play this year, but he already, like, he's already going to impact some people. We all have influence. And especially the higher up you rise, the, the more weight you carry, and the more people are going to be jumping around. I get to sit next to two guys, and Brownie's sitting in the back over there. These are three guys that influence everybody around them, including myself. 
right? They challenge me because they're thinkers and they really want to be good, so I can't show up with anything less than my best. Otherwise, I'm letting them down. And I love them too much to let them down. And I do believe that there's going to be impact from not just one or two guys this year. There's going to be a lot.